left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Uh, we still got some rights left, right? Left, right, left, right. Uh, I was saying we still have some rights left, right? Left, right, left, right. Uh, I was inquiring about the uh, rights left, left, right, left, right. Um, well, we still have some uh, rights left uh, by our ancestors, rights, right, rights left for our children and, and their children. I mean, we, we, we have rights left to gain, not rights left to lose. Left, right, left, right, left, right. Um, uh, 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 we, we have rights left to fight for. We must increase the number of rights left. I mean, what if we, what if we left right at the moment someone was trying to reduce the number of rights left? Pretty soon we'd have no rights left, right? Left, right, left, right, left, right, halt! Thank you very much. Uh, a treat. I think of myself more as a trick than a treat, but thank you. I've been working with this form that I call meme splicing. You're no doubt familiar with gene splicing where you take some DNA and you splice some new information and then you put it back into its uh, form and let it uh, mutate so that you can get cubicle cubic oranges and things like that. So I've taken, memes are supposedly invented by um, Richard Dawkins or named by Richard Dawkins are sort of an equivalent to genes, only memes are the things that we inherit um, that are non-biological, for instance, language. So what I'm doing is phonetically modifying memes. I take memes like a cliche and I blow out a few letters and blow in a few other letters. So. Um, in this particular one, I'm looking at rights, and I'm blowing out the R, and I'm blowing in a W and an H so that rights become whites. And uh, so this one is the white right meme splice, or I like to call it Mr. Fudd Goes Tea Party. <laughs> we demand equal whites. <laughs> Stand up for your whites. Our forefathers fought hard for the whites we have today. <laughs> Basic human whites. The white to bear arms, the white to vote, the white to a fair trial. Are you ready to defend your whites? Whites and responsibilities. Our whites are eternally enshrined in the Constitution. The white to freedom of speech, the white to assemble freely, the white to life the white to overthrow an unjust government. We don't intend to see our whites trampled on. We will fight for the white to be free. <laughs> Many of us uh, recently um, celebrated the uh, 70th, what would have been the 70th birthday of uh, John Lennon. Um, I'm a huge fan, and um, my most recent book, which is out there, is called Reading the Bible Backwards, and I play around with backwards narratives. This isn't in the book, but this is one that sort of came later. This is A True History of John Lennon, Backwards in Beds. A king-sized bed in the Dakota. For a photo shoot, he curls like a newborn, naked about Yoko Ono, fully clothed, her arms away from him, flung back, flat on the mattress, crossed at the wrists. Desperately, he kisses her left cheek. It is his last morning on earth. The bed in bed, big and double in a hotel room, their combination honeymoon anti-war protest covered by the world's press, some of whom lie down with them for interviews. The bed he sits cross-legged in, singing Give Peace a Chance in a great raw holler. Yoko Ono and all their guests shouting out the chorus to what becomes a worldwide hit. Lennon rolls a hospital bed into Abbey Road studio, Yoko Ono in it, convalescing from an accident. We can't bear to be apart, he tells the other Beatles. They're annoyed, but they go ahead, their final album recorded in the presence of this bed. Across England, John and Paul sit face to face on the ends of twin beds, two motherless men writing she loves you between gigs. To synchronize their phrasing, they lean in on the harmonies and watch each other's lips. At Mendips, men love Crescent, the lad whose school motto is out of this rock, 
likes to lie in bed all day, wafting in and out of sleep. Aunt Mimi calls him lazy and underachiever, but he is sure of the greatness in his soul, though he's never yet even heard of rock and roll. Age three, John Lennon is taken from his mother because she lets him sleep with her in the same bed as her lover. Aunt Mimi reports them. Aunt Mimi steals him from that bed to which there is never after that any way back. The labor ward, the blitz, incendiaries fall on Liverpool all night long, the worst raid of the war, and baby John, for safety's sake, is placed beneath the bed. Beneath the bed, his first night on earth, Lennon screams, that great raw holler in fine form as the bombs roar. So uh, here's a, a, another meme splice, and in this one, um, I'm taking the word iron, and I'm actually not blowing anything out, I'm just blowing a Y onto the end, so that iron becomes irony. Iron, irony, meme splice. The hull of the Titanic was made of solid irony. <laughs> Some people are low on irony. My wife has to take irony every day. <laughs> Women have a special need for irony. But you can die of too much irony. Branded by hot ironies. Pig irony. My father ruled with a fist of irony. Old irony heart. My mother had irony eyes. They were irony age people doing the ironying. <laughs> ironying out the wrinkles, ironying out the difficulties. I have several ironies in the fire. I have an irony will, irony in the soul. My favorite, my favorite superhero is Irony Man. Irony John, Jeremy Ironies. <laughs> Irony is found throughout the universe. Most meteorites contain what is known as tellurgic irony. All the irony in our blood comes ultimately from the stars. a uh, love poem called Between Your Disconnection and Mine. Between your disconnection and mine, that other United States, we've been kept apart by Canada, which is what? A series of provinces. I will not let Alberta stand between us. I will take a train. I will see the sea. I've melted all my ingots in the sun of your stare. I've cracked the last diamond for the finest tiny diamond inside. And even at the tip of my tongue, I felt that tinier tip yet, the as yet undiscovered bit of the tongue you need to say love precisely. Love. Love concision has made me strange. I cut corners in words. I should have found you by now. Everything points toward you. The very land slants forward. We'll wind up in the same gullies, no matter what we say. We'll be at the crest of the same waves, still not making eye contact. I will stand with you at the very feet of God, and neither you nor I will finally nod or what. We could break all the great spells of time and circumstance with a glance 